Hello all and welcome and I am the realist philosopher and in this video I would like to talk about women or anybody for that matter wearing a hijab while on duty in the United States military. Now I have a problem with this. I have a problem with her wearing the hijab. I have a problem with anyone in any branch of the military working in a position that is government funded. You are essentially working for the government while on duty, while at work, wearing some kind of religious symbol that is evocative, that is visible. We're not talking about a cross underneath your shirt on a necklace, right, that nobody can see, okay? We're talking about a very visible symbol of an alien religion that is very, very alien and, by the way, is antithetical, I think most of us can agree, is antithetical to the ideals and the Constitution, for that matter, of being an American. Why would she be doing this? Not to mention the fact that you have the separation of church and state, which is part and parcel why it used to be that while you were on duty in the military, you were not allowed to wear very obvious symbols of your religion. That was for when you were off duty. And these are supposed to be personal expressions of your religious faith. Yes, you have the freedom to express yourself in your private life. Yes, you have the freedom to pursue whatever religious path you wish in life. You have freedom of religion in America. But when you're on someone else's time and they're paying you, they have a certain level of control over your mode of dress. And yes, self-expression. You can't run around the office yelping curse words all over the place. There are certain things you cannot do in terms of self-expression when on the job or certain things that are at the behest of your employer. Now, when you are being employed by the United States government, which has a strict policy of separation of church and state, you should not be wearing obvious evocative symbols of your religious beliefs. And here we have this woman wearing a hijab. So that's my problem number one, okay? So a Muslim soldier says here, come in, Sergeant Major, force her to remove her hijab. She shouldn't be wearing it in the first place. And yes, by the way, you'll find out she got special dispensation, which I think is BS. The rule should apply to everybody. There shouldn't be any special rule exempting certain people from the rules everybody else has to follow. So... Sergeant Cecilia Valdovinos has filed a complaint after her command sergeant major accused her of being out of hair regulations and ordered her to remove her hijab. Okay, so her commanding officer gave her an order and she's angry because she had to follow it. See, <laughs> this is the problem with feminists. You know she's a feminist. Just look at her. She's going to insist on wearing that disgusting headpiece that has no place in the military of the United States. And under military regulation, she's not allowed to wear it. She had to get special dispensation to do so. That's number one. There should be no such special dispensation. Everybody should look the same in the military. In, in military life, discipline is key. Also, conformity is key. When you have some people getting away with what other people can't and getting special privileges and dispensation, it has a negative effect on morale. It fractures unit cohesiveness. Human beings have a very strong fundamental idea of what is fair, what is unfair, and this is not fair or right. You know, I love how people talk about how wonderful it is to bring in all these people from these diverse cultures, but nobody ever talks about assimilation anymore. Very few people talk about assimilation. All they do is talk about, oh, we have so much, we can give these people a hand up. They don't stop to think that they're harming themselves and their own home, their own country. They don't stop to think about the broader ramifications of bringing these people in or whether or not they will assimilate. Because if they don't assimilate, then they're just bringing their problems with them. They think they're running from their problems? No, they're bringing their problems with them because their problems were caused by their home cultures, by their view of the world. Just running from a country won't solve it because this individual 
is part of the problem that they're fleeing. So unless they assimilate to your culture, which they're coming to, which is a great, wonderful culture, which is why they are coming there in the first place, then the only thing that could occur is them making your life, your country worse. Because if they don't assimilate, what they're going to try and do is assimilate you through time, through exposure to their beliefs, through balkanization as more and more of them come in and build up their own voting blocks. And before you know it, your home becomes their home. So anyway, let's get to her complaint. So Sergeant Cecilia Valadamos was at a chapel at Fort Carson, Colorado for a suicide prevention briefing on March 6th when she says her command sergeant major grabbed her by the arm. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. It's kind of like that story in the news where they said that Trump, one of Trump's guards, one of his security, somehow assaulted and threw down a reporter. The reporter said she was manhandled and tossed to the ground, but then they found security footage and saw that it was total bunk, total BS. She wasn't assaulted, wasn't anything. She tried to get too close to the president. Somebody did stop her, but nobody grabbed her harshly, twisted her arm or threw her down, but the entire media ran with it because it was what they wanted to hear. It was in some way, shape or form bashing Trump. Uh, this, is, this seems kind of similar to that. Then nobody's grabbing any woman's arm in the military, okay, especially not in a huge public gathering. So right there, I'm already skeptical. The senior non-commissioned officers believe that Valdovinos, 26, who was an approved exemption, <laughs> exemption, approved exemption, yeah, yeah, why? Why are you getting an exemption from her brigade commander to wear a hijab and uniform was wearing her hair out of regulations underneath it. She sold army times on Tuesday. Okay, so he believed. And so he asked you to take it off to see if your hair was in regulation because, you know, you are wearing a covering so your hair could look disheveled and a mess under there. He don't know. Nobody knows. He's trying to maintain discipline and make sure that you're following the rules. And by the way, maybe it bothered him that you had an exemption, as it should. He didn't get an exemption. He's clean cut. High and tight hair. Meanwhile, you get all these special privileges. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice for you? You can walk around with your little hijab on. I am an American, but I don't have to follow the rules everyone else does, even though I've signed up to serve in the military, <laughs> which has higher standards in regards to controls on my behavior and how I look and present myself, but I don't have to follow any of those. Give me the exemption, because I'm an oppressed Muslim. Yeah. So... No one asked her whether her hair was in a regulation bun. Well, you has covered, so <laughs> ask you? What does that mean? Of course they're not going to ask you. They're going to want to see because you can say anything. I'm just going to take your word for it before demanding that she remove the garment. So far, I don't see anything unreasonable. you got to understand that this is the military. This isn't working at the local quickie mart. Okay? <laughs> Your badge isn't straight. Your name tag is slightly askew. Fix that. I mean, what? <laughs> Nobody gives a crap about that. If you got a boss that's demanding that your name tag be perfectly straight and in no way askew like that, you got a real asshole for a boss. But I don't never encountered that. Come on. Uh, you know, but really, let's be honest here. You're not working at Walmart or the Quickie Mart or whatever. This is the U.S. military, Okay. She didn't seem to realize that. She seems to think it's just a regular job like any other. How dare you demand of me that I take off my hijab? Look, look at how privileged she is. Look at the entitlement. So your commanding officer asks you to do something which in my mind is perfectly reasonable. Take off your head covering to show that you're not trying to use it to be lazy and circumvent having to keep your hair in regulation state. Women have certain hairdos that they must have, unless, of course, they just, you know, go full G.I. Jane, which would be great. It would save a lot of time and effort, and that would be in regs, too. But, you know, women don't have to do that. The men have to do that, but not the women. Because I want to look attractive for men. Okay, you can look attractive for men, but men, you got to cut all your hair off. <laughs> yeah, but no double standard. Okay, so she took the scarf off. The covering first, she said, but Command Sergeant Major Kirsten Montoya de Kirsten? Was this a woman? Wait, 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 wait. This is very interesting. 
so her command sergeant who asked her to take off the hijab job was a woman. See, they were trying to make it sound. They didn't say that it was a man, but you kind of got that sense. No, it was a fellow Wayman that was making you do this. Hmm. Well, you certainly can't claim sexism. What are you going to claim now, huh? It was racism, even though Islam is not a race. <laughs> okay. When she removed the cap underneath, which covers her hairline, and underneath her chin, the length of hair came loose from its bun. You didn't say allegedly. You're taking her word for it. Oh, this is great. Say, so I automatically take her word for it. So her hair was out of regulation, but she's trying to claim that taking off her hairpiece <laughs> made her hair become disheveled. Why? Why would you put your hair in regulation when you're just going to wear this head covering all day? That doesn't make any logical sense. Now, you would if you were a stickler about following the rules, but if you were a stickler about following the rules, you wouldn't ask for a special exemption in the first place. If you were somebody who was privileged, entitled, excuse me, entitled and thought that they deserved unearned privileges, well then, you would probably walk around with this head covering on and your hair in a disheveled state. But she claims, she claims that her hair was in regulation bun. <laughs> like Princess Leia uh, in Star Wars. But... But when I took it off is when it became disheveled. It wasn't disheveled before. I, I love how the person who was writing this just says it as if it's a truth, as if it's a truism, takes her word for it. It doesn't say she says. It says when she removed it, this is what happened, as if it's 100% fact, as if this person who wrote this article was there. I, I just love the white knighting going on here. <laughs> of course, that is if the writer is white, if it's, uh, if it's a female. Ah, oh, Megan Myers, what's the sisterhood? Yeah, the sisterhood. They look out for each other. Waymen always look out for other Waymen. All right. Yeah, so you're just taking her word for it and speaking as if it was truth. L lovely, lovely. Yeah, you got to love the unbiased reporting here. So the battalion... Uh, a uh, who accompanied Val Dovinos and Montoya for the inspection says that the senior NCO tapped the sergeant on her shoulder before leading her outside of the chapel. <sighs> yep. So upon removing her hijab, it was evident her hair was completely down. Captain Brooke Smith said in a statement, CSM Montoya told her to get her hair back in regulation and not to let it happen again. At no point did CSM Montoya touch the soldier or yell at her at all or within earshot of other soldiers. All right, there's witnesses that say she never touched her. Yet, the Muslim is claiming she was grabbed by the arm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. It's very interesting how she tells a story that spins a yarn that makes her seem like the victim. Meanwhile, everybody else is saying her hair was down and not in rags. And they probably could tell that. You know, just because you've got this fabric covering doesn't mean that people can't see the bumps of your hair down here on the nape of your neck and have a pretty good idea that your hair underneath is not regulation. So these women that confronted her, Captain Brooke Smith, so all women, it's clear that they were annoyed and resented the fact that she thought she could get away with walking around with her hair not in its regulation state, but they had to. So they wanted to make sure that she followed the rules. I see nothing wrong with that. Oh, but of course, you know, this woman, she, she sees a problem. I say woman very loosely. Not a lot of real women out there today. Mostly just little girls claiming to be women and then running around complaining all the time about how they're oppressed and so put upon, like this broad. Val Davinos claims her hair was tied up under the job. Wait, 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 wait. You say claims. But you just said earlier, you didn't say claim. You said her hair was up, and then it came undone when she took the hijab off. Now you're contradicting yourself. Is it a claim or is it a truth? The undercap has an extra, extra length of fabric inside. Val Davinos explained that she wraps around her bun to secure it before pulling the cap down. That's why her hair came loose when she removed it, she said. Uh -huh. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that some army officer, non-commissioned or otherwise, would then escort her to her captain if she didn't have a pretty good reason for suspecting that the woman's hair was not in regulation mode. Now, I know a lot of you out there might be saying, what does it matter? We're not in war. <laughs> what does it matter where her hair is? Oh, down, left, right. What does it matter? Nobody can see it anyway. It matters because if you allow any breakdown in discipline, it spreads like a virus. 
People find out she's getting away with it. Other people will get away with it. And before you know it, order breaks down and the respect for the chain of command disintegrates. You think I'm being hyperbolic? <laughs> I'm not. Military order and respect for the chain of command is very important. It has to be maintained at all times. It's no joke. And there's no room for compromise in that regard, of course, you know, unless you get a special dispensation because you're a Muslim. But even then, you have to have some kind of standards, which means your hair still has to be in regulation. And I have no doubt, I have no doubt that this Captain Brooke and this non-commissioned sergeant saw underneath that the bumps indicated that her hair was not in regulation. Otherwise, why would they go up to her and confront her? Huh? Oh, of course, she's trying to make it look like, oh, they just randomly approached me and made my, me remove my hijab for no reason. People don't do that. People don't act that way. Anyway, in an equal opportunity complaint filed on March 7th, she said she described her first sergeant referring to her as the girl with the hood. The girl with the hood, so what? She didn't know your name. So somebody asked, who are you talking about? Oh, the girl in the hood. Because she didn't know your name. Was she just going to say, the girl? Which girl? There's 500 of them. There's tons of girls. Which one? The one with the, red, the, 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 the jade wedding ring that's, you know, different, that is not the same as all the other broads' wedding rings? And let's be honest, not a lot of these broads are married, huh? Most of them are feminists. <laughs> so, uh, you know, no, she had to say something that, she knew about you that everybody else could identify that delineated you from everyone else. So the person she was asking about you, talking about you two, could delineate you from everybody else. So what? The girl with the hood. What, what's, what's wrong with that? Uh, so it's, it's what I've always said. People who are always looking for racism, sexism, whatever ism, Islamophobia, throw an ism on that. It's pretty much the same thing. They see it. If they're always looking for it and expecting it to happen, they'll see it in everything that occurs in their life. She described her first sergeant as referring to her as the girl in the hood, a culinary specialist, she said. She was recently a culinary specialist, she said. She was recently reassigned from an on-post dining facility to her battalion's headquarters company after objecting to cooking pork products. <laughs> I love it. So she's not able to put aside... Well, why is she even in the military? Why is she even in the military? She needs all these special considerations. Why is she there? I mean, she's just an affirmative action hire, right? She's just an affirmative action hire that the higher-ups can hold up and say, look, we're progressive. See, we have Muslims serving, and we allow them to wear their little headgear too. Yeah, well, I want a virtue signal so I can get uh, promoted to general. <laughs> See how progressive I am? So a culinary specialist, she was recently reassigned because she didn't like to cook pork products. What? So... She has to wear headgear that's against regulations, and she has to get a special dispensation for that. And she won't work with pork products, but she was hired to cook as a cook. D don't people in the military eat pork? <laughs> so she can't even do her job. Why is she there? Why doesn't she ask to be honorably discharged because she's unable to do her job because she can't work with certain food products even though she's a freaking cook? Oh, let me guess. Everybody on the whole freaking base, all 10, 20,000 of them, should stop eating pork because it offends her sensibilities. Yeah, yeah, this is what I mean. These people don't assimilate. They don't assimilate. You have to assimilate to them. Goes on to say, and previously she added she reported to her company commander that while deployed last year, another soldier referred to her as a terrorist. The captain did not escalate the claim, she said. Any proof? Any witnesses? Is it a he said, said she said? Is it, or is it one of these, you know, I mean, basically she said, she said, he said, she said, whatever. Is it essentially the kind of case where you have no witnesses? <laughs> Maybe the captain did not escalate because there was no proof and the other person denied it? And already, I think you're a liar about the being grabbed by your arm bullshit. That doesn't sound right at all. Nobody would do that to you. Nobody would do that, especially if you being a Muslim and they know how much of a whiner and complainer you are. Oh, no, please. I take all reports of soldiers, soldiers disrespecting another soldier's religious beliefs, observances, or traditions very seriously. Colonel David Zinn, the 2nd Infantry Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division Commander, that's a mouthful, who signed Valdivinos' exemption memo, said in a statement, you shouldn't have given her an exemption. But of course, you know, if he didn't, he, she would have just went and complained to a general. <laughs> Probably got on the news. 
There is currently an inquiry regarding Sergeant Valdivinos' claim. Right, go ahead and try to destroy the career of a higher up for no good reason. I will ensure our unit continues our tradition of placing a high value on the rights of soldiers to observe the tenets of their respective religions or to observe no religion at all. How about you observe the freaking Constitution, which says a separation between church and state, okay? And you, being a government entity, should employ that among all of your employees when they are on the clock. How about you do that? And don't give any exemptions to anybody. That would be fair. That would be very, very fair. Oh, but of course, you know, we need special treatment, right? Because she's so oppressed. The inspection was a blatant act of Islamophobia. It's not a thing. How is that a thing? Well, what do you mean Islamophobia? Do they know what the word phobia means, by the way? It's an irrational fear of something, right? Like I'm afraid of a little fucking spider that doesn't have any stinger or venom <laughs> that's irrational right i can just step on that fucker but uh, what the hell am i afraid of her for what does a phobia have to do with asking you to take off your headgear and show me that your hair is in regulation state which it wasn't according to the head of the military religious freedom foundation you have all the freedom you want on your own time but when you're on the clock you do what i tell you especially in the military but oh no she's a special flower rules don't apply to her all right so the story goes on by saying since filing her EO complaint, Valdivinus' leadership had a chaplain check in with her on March 14th. She said the same day she met with the EO investigating officer. Otherwise, she added her chain of command has not addressed the incident with her. Right, because the whole world should stop for you, right? It should be nonstop, you, 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 pandering to your emotions, your feelings, your hurt feelings, even though you're a soldier and you're so strong, right, that you can't work with pork. Ay, ay, ay. L uh, I love this. Since early 2017, the Army has allowed religious headgear for soldiers whose faith requires it. With written approval by a brigade commander. Well, I'll just make up my own religion that requires headgear. <laughs> then you'll have no choice but to let me wear it. The regulation states that the hijab must not cover the face, must be a solid color, or in matching camouflage to the uniform of the day, and it meets the end. Then the ends must be tucked into any uniform top. That must be a real bitch to wear in hot weather. The bulk of hair must be able to be shifted around to accommodate a combat helmet when necessary according to the regulation. So let me know what you think. Was her sergeant wrong for asking to see her hair? Demanding something of her even though she's in the military and to have things demanded of her is part of the fucking gig. <sighs> Was her sergeant major right? Or is Miss Valdivinos right? Was she a victim of Islamophobia? Whatever the hell that is. Let me know in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd be so inclined, please consider donating to my Patreon and make a once-a-day live call-in show from 9 to 10 a.m. every day, Monday to Friday, 9 to 10 a.m. New York City time. You'll find the link in the description along with all of my social media, my other YouTube channel, which I suggest you follow in case anything happened to this one, as well as my podcast on SoundCloud. And I also put all of the episodes audio parts anyway of my life call and shows on that channel as well so i got a lot of content you can view i do a lot of work produce a lot of stuff so if you consider donating please go to the realistphilosopher.com forward slash donate that's the realistphilosopher.com forward slash donate and that's it i am the realist philosopher and i wish you a good day take care